Okay, so let's talk about, uh, again, this is, this shiur is dedicated for the Hatzlocha of uh, Rachel Chaya Batsara, code name Karen. We're going to talk about dry food today, for Passover. Dry food for Passover, it's some other stuff. All dry food, all dry fruit, go through a p- different types of processes in the manufacturing of improving them and preserving them. All dry fruit. If, you, if you're seeing any, uh, if you ever dried fruit at home, or dried tomatoes at home, I remember my parents, when my father was alive, they used to get special tomatoes, used to get boxes of tomatoes, and they simply used to slice them open, and lay them on those large sheets like that of metal, and on top of that they used to put, uh, you know, cloth and some other stuff so bugs would not come in, and first of all, the flavor, and the color is completely different. The color of dry tomato, when you dry it by yourself, is like this. It's like dark brown. When you get dry tomatoes in the, yeah. in the store, it's red. It all remains in process. So all dry fruit goes through different stages of processes of manufacturing processes to preserve it and to enhance the flavor because it's not the same and you want everything to be identical. So that's why it's very important to be careful with that, uh, to make sure that they have kosher for Pesach uh, uh, symbol on the dry fruit. Now, certain places, you know, if the kashrut organization or the kashrut supervising is not that uh, strong, they'll say, oh, dry fruit, okay, go like this, everything is kosher le Pesach. It's not, that's not good. To get something that says kosher le Pesach. If it's not kashel pesach, don't take it. Uh, there are, uh, you know, certain things that they have even uh, kashrut issue all year long. Like, uh, for example, dry blueberries. Very hard, very hard to get dry blueberries with not only kosher pesach, kosher in general, sign of it. For many reasons. One of the reasons is because there are sometimes there are worms you know, or maggots, whatever it is, inside the uh, the blueberry when uh, when they lay the egg into the flower. So it depends where it is. They have problems with that. Uh, sometimes it's the and we'll see it the oil that they put in. There are certain oil. So if you're going to take dry fruit and I don't know, I don't even say take cranberries or something like this. Go like this, there is a certain oil in it. Yeah. And so you need to make sure that it's done kosher. So let's say, for example, let's talk, I'm not going to talk about all the different dry fruits, but some of the more common ones that we might find or need for Pesach. So one of them, of course, everybody loves to eat in Pesach. Matzah. Fruit, fruit, that's it, not matzah. Raisins. Raisins. Black raisins. Prunes. I prunes. I went to Brook. I went to Brooklyn. Uh, you know, was it, two weeks ago. So this guy is talking to me about matzah. That this matzah is good. That matzah is good. This one and that one. You know, he's like, and which one do you buy? And why do you buy? And he's explaining to me why he's buying. I didn't even ask him anything. You know, but the guy is giving me a whole spiel about why he prefers Israeli matzah than American matzah. Whatever. And I said, okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. He says to me, but sir. Don't forget to buy the prunes. I said, thank you. I don't have problems with that, but never mind. But prunes. So prunes. <coughs> thank you. Uh, I got allergic to something. Uh, God, my eyes are burning now. I don't know. Something. I got something allergic to. So, so prunes go a process of drying. Of course, it depends how you dry the fruit. None of them are being dried open air. Some of them are just being put into a giant dehumidifiers that they go on, and some go through a different process of drying. So they're not all the same thing. Now, if you're going to take a prune, a regular prune, I mean, it's not a real prune, it's a plum, and then you're going to turn it into a prune, you'll see that it becomes very hard. And yet, all the prunes that we get are very soft. How is this possible? I thought it's supposed to be dry. So they go through a process of dehydrating it first. And after that, they dip it into a, a tub or a pool of oil. 
while it's what it does that and it's a certain certain uh, mineral oil that they put it in uh, but when it does it it goes back or kind of revives the the flavor and the shape and the and the elasticity of the prune itself uh, sometimes in that pool when they put the prunes they also with together with the mineral oil they also sometimes that's why you need to look at the ingredients if it says there uh, they put in uh, uh, citric acid and citric acid is being manufactured from chametz that's why it's very important to, to make sure that it's kashola pesach. In a way, you'll be better off with something that is organic than something that it's uh, you know mass produced like that because of that. But they have to say they have to say citric uh, acid or whatever it is on it. But you gotta be careful. That's why you need to get something that is that is a P on it that is kashola pesach. So that's and prunes. Everybody uses prunes. Many people use prunes for haroset. Many people use prunes for other other reasons that uh, you know you know what they use prunes for. So you know to open the rotor router. So uh, I use great stuff for the haroset. Well, whatever you want. Yes, it all, all whatever gets you through the night. Now cranberries, for example, a lot of people use cranberries. Cranberries, and especially in America, in Israel also, cranberries became like a big thing to use. So regular cranberries, if you look at it, they're very shiny. Every time something is shiny, you know there is oil in it. Dates, and stuff like this, and so on and so forth. Uh, however, in cranberries, most of the time, the oil that they put it on is sunflower oil. Now, sunflower oil is not a problem, but for Ashkenazim it is. Ashkenazim don't use sunflower oil because... It's a seed, and for them, it falls under the category of legumes. Even though, I mean, listen, I'm not a botanist or anything like that, but legumes are really like beans and stuff like that. I don't think sunflower, but, you know, uh, never mind. You know, some people don't eat, uh, don't eat, uh, no, what you call it? No. Uh, uh, peanuts. Right? There's our famous tshuva of Rav Moshe regarding that. There's, there's the, the, the tshuva of Chazonish about, uh, about peanuts and so on and so forth. But anything for them that it's uh, like with shells, they don't, they don't consume. So for Ashkenazim, there will be sunflower oil will be, <coughs> excuse me, will be a problem. Uh, when you have uh, cranberries that are, are you know, sugar-free or whatever it is, has to have a kosher le Pesach sign on it. Has to. Because in the process, in the, in the manufacturing process, when they process those uh, cranberries, they uh, take a sweetener that comes from uh, oranges uh, sometimes, and in that there is uh, flavor uh, additives that they, that they add, and that's why you have to make sure it's kosher altogether, and then especially kosher for Pesach. And it, the more processed it is... We said it's from the orange... Yeah, the, it tastes like orange, but to the orange, to the orange uh, 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 flavor, they add other stuff to make sure that it tastes like that. It's always like this. The more processed it is, the more you have to be careful from chametz. The more natural it is, it's, it, the better it is. Like, for example, you take mango, and it's not a problem. Uh, is there a problem with mango? No, no problem with mango. When it's fresh, when it's dry... Can you tell me for sure what's in it? You don't even know what's in it. You think they take the mango, the papaya, and they just dry it like this. It's not. It's not. There is a certain oil in it. Where does it come from? How is it being processed? That's why it needs to have a reliable hersher. Not just some, you know, UFO kosher supervision that you, nobody knows who it is. And says, oh, that's kosher. Oh, it's mistama, it's, uh, you know, most likely it is kosher. No, it has to be, when it comes to Pesach, and, but not only for Pesach. For me, as far as I am concerned, I don't, uh, I don't hold myself uh, to be a big expert on kashrut. That's why I only go by the reliable hechsharim, the, the big hechsharim that I know, and that's it. I don't say, oh, yeah, it's a kosher. Some, you, know, you don't know who the rabbi is. There's a certain rabbi who gives kashrut that he ne he's never in America. He's in Israel. 
I won't say it to the camera, you know, I don't want to have a lawsuit, but, you know, he's in Israel, he gives kashriot to, to, to stuff in America. And they give me the, the ingredients, okay, you know, I see the ingredients, okay, I'll give you kashriot. That's not, that doesn't fly. So therefore, I said, you know what, I have the OU, nothing like the OU. OU is terrific, the OU, the CRC, uh, Star K, Half K, you know, OK. These are things that, you know, they have plenty of products. That they, if there isn't, you know, of course there's other ones that are good. I'm not saying this is the only one. There's Montreal Kashru, there's this, there's that. But if it's something that I don't know and I don't recognize as being a reliable Kashru uh, supervision, I don't touch it. Don't touch it. You know what? I don't think I'm, thank God, don't think I'm suffering from uh, malnutrition. So I'm just not going to have it. The problem is not with the Kashru, the problem will be with my attitude. And that is in my control. What comes out into my mouth, it's in my control. So therefore, you know what? Don't know what it is, don't eat it. I'm trying to work very hard on my ulama ba. I don't want to lose it over, over something I'm going to put in my mouth. Don't want it. <clears throat> Regarding figs, figs is a problem. Figs is a problem uh, because they used to dry it, they used to put flour on the, uh, on the figs to dry. They used to dry it out in the open, and they used to put flour on top because they didn't want bugs to come in and so on and so forth. However, figs themselves have problems of, of, uh, of maggots inside the figs. So there are some of them uh, that are kosher, there's not a problem. I even seen one time, and I remember this, it was, I was so happy. I said, finally, I can make... Uh, make haroset like they used to make in Turkey. Because in Turkey, the haroset, at least in Izmir, they used to make the haroset with figs inside. So, oh, finally I can have, I can use my mother's recipe and find it inside. So I, I got one with kosher le Pesach, I was so happy. I said, you know, always, you know. So I take the thing, I slice it open, in the garbage, slice this one open. <laughs> it's like I said, after like three of them, I said, okay, that's it. I'm throwing the whole thing out. It was full of, full of, uh, full of little maggots inside. Yes, sir. If a fruit is dry, the bug is dry. What do we care? Well, those those bugs were not dry; they were alive. Oh. <laughs> and still, and still, if the bug is dead, if you have like little maggots there, and you see that they're dead, are you going to be able to take all of them? No. You can't take. You know, if you have a fig that has like worms inside. You're not going to be able to take all of them, so therefore you're going to eat something. There's no Dino Bitum Beshishim because it's Briya, it's a whole entity. And if it's infested, so therefore you don't eat it. You want to have figs for, for that? You know, if I really wanted it, apparently I don't really want it. Because if I really wanted figs to make the Hamoset like my ancestors had in Turkey, which I tell the truth, I don't really care so much anymore. But if I really wanted it, when they had figs in the summer, I have a dehydrator at home, like a good cowboy. So I would take my, the figs and I will dehydrate. But apparently I don't want it, so I don't have it. No big deal. Nothing happens. You know, I'm still, as you see me, looking good, even though I didn't eat the... Uh, and and I tell you, I'll be honest with you, good thing my mother doesn't watch YouTube. I like my wife's house better than my mother's. Yeah. So, hmm. now, uh, 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 dates. Dates also. All dates, if you have dates here, whatever, you look at dates, if you have, you know, you look at it, there's oil on them. That oil, and they go through a treatment. Dates, when you get regular dates, you can't, they don't look like your dates that you have, that you, that you buy in a store. They're usually like on the yellow side and like light brown when they, when they, when they ripen and develop a lot of sugars in it. Here, many times they take it, they deep freeze them. To, and, and that's by the way what we used to do. We used to take dates and then put them in the freezer for a few for a few days. For whatever reason, the sugar started to work over there. And then you take it out, you can eat it. But they put it in deep freeze and then they put it in oil. All of them have to have it. So therefore, even year around, you need to have a reliable kosher symbol on dates. You can't just take dates. Oh, it's organic. It's dates. Well, what's dates? I mean, there's nothing in it. Here's a date. No, it has to have a reliable kosher. A symbol of that as well. Uh, so now many of them, when they they 
they uh, they process the, uh, the the dates, they also put certain starches on it. So that starch, if it's made from potatoes, it's fine. However, sometimes it's made out of legumes. Sometimes it's made out of regular chametz stuff. You don't know what it is. Can rely on it. It has to be kosher lepesach. It has to be kosher lepesach. Uh, there is uh, another another one which is very very uh, common to use. It's apricots. Apricots are a problem. First of all, if you're going to buy organic dry apricots, the color is going to be brown. The apricots that you buy, the, uh, the apricot color, that you know the dry apricots, and it's like orangey like that, uh, I try to stay away because I can become very allergic to them. Why is that? Because there is uh, sulfites in it. And by the way, in many of those fruits, there is sulfites. Now, sulfites <coughs> is a pure chemical uh, uh, you know, element. And in, in, uh, in, in, in cases like this, you need to ask a rabbi who is well-versed in halacha. If you could use it or you cannot use it. I don't use it. I don't want the sulfites in my body. I'm trying to be very careful what goes into my body. That's why I got myself a shot. A vaccine. I don't want to be sick. Right? Second dose too? Hmm? Second dose too? Yes, I got a second dose, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no problem about that. Now, great. you need to ask a, and, and, and if you don't have, and if you don't have access to a knowledgeable yeah. rabbi in the issue of kashrut, he needs to know. He doesn't need to do like his own research you know, on the internet, here, there, and everything. He needs to know. When I'm talking about rabbis like this, I'm talking about somebody in the magnitude of Rabbi Belsky, and, you know, and something like that. Don't even come to ask me because I, I'm not going to answer that. I don't know it. I'm not an expert in food processes and so on and so forth. And it is. I mean, you really got to be involved with this all the time. Rav Belsky Lava Shalom was, was involved with that. He was the head of the OU, the Kashrut organization. So he knew. If you can't get an access to a rabbi like this, contact any of those big Kashrut organizations, the CRC, the OU, places like that. Ask them, they'll answer you back. You don't know, you don't have access, don't get it. So it will be without, without you know, um, apricots this year. So you won't have your, your rice with apricots and, uh, and raisins, you know, one year. Nothing will happen for crying out loud. Uh, you put, you put the stuff inside. It's very bad for you. I mean, if you know how many chemicals go into your food, you know, you, you'll say, that's nothing. I should go get a vaccine immediately. Yeah. Now, uh, so now regarding raisins, most raisins, most raisins don't have a coating on them. Most of them. Some do. Uh, but uh, you need to, you know, you need to, again, try to get, find ones that have a, uh, a reliable hersher because if you're going to mix them up with food, it might be a problem. Like, let's say, for example, I don't know, let's say you're Persian, something like this. You know, Persians eat like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They eat rice with, uh, with uh, raisins. So, you know, right? be careful, Eitan. Hey, if you're going to marry a Persian, that's what you're going to be eating. No mogi filter fish, rice and raisins. You know, terrible stuff. I don't know how you... Don't do it to yourself, man. By the way, I have an available donor. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so, you need to ask, you need to ask uh, a rabbi... Uh, again, who is well versed with that? If you can find something with a with a P on it, right? I would I would by myself. I try to uh, not use certain geometric uh, kashrut organization. If you know what I mean, they have a P on that. Usually for me, it's a sign that it's not kosher, so I don't eat that. If you know what I'm saying, uh, I just said there's many geometric things. Uh, so, uh huh. So, I don't, I don't use that stuff, but find something that is kosher. You can find it, you can find it. No big deal. <coughs> By the way, in Europe, many times, they used to use haroset, that it's not, uh, was mainly from, uh, from, uh, from fresh apples and stuff like this, not from uh, dry fruit. 
because of that. So guess, you know, they used to put uh, almonds and walnuts and apples and wine and make it like mud like this. We, in a way, got kind of uh, distracted from the, I guess, the original uh, uh, consistency of, of, of haroset. Because haroset it needs to be something that you kind of, you know, dip it in and shake it off, something like this, more liquidy. So I have, a, I have somebody that I know. He, guys, you know, he went like uh, haywire Rocky on us. So he uses silan, you know, that uh, the date, uh, date honey. Or it's not really date honey. They think it's date. It's not really date. They use silan, the dip duck is like this. Okay, that also needs to be kasher le pesach. However, that has a bigger problem because you need to make sure we hit as a reliable hechsher in Israel in which they took out not only kasher le pesach, but also trumot, umasot, and so on and so forth. So not just some kind of, you know, some guy like that. You have to make sure it's kosher. So these are the things you gotta you gotta watch out. You gotta be very very careful from that. Now let's talk about sweetener since we talk. Oh, we have some. Eh, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, sugar, stevia, you know all these uh, things that people use, uh, you know, to, for for sugar, sugar, sugar substances and so on. Uh, whether it's uh, sugar powder, salt, and tea. Mm. These are the things that we are going to talk about now. So there are, in sugar, there are certain manufacturers that uh, they use also other, you know, in the packing houses, they use other things uh, besides sugar, not only sugar, so like flour and so on and so forth. So let's say Domino's, it's okay, because you know that the only thing they do is sugar. So that's okay. Uh, again, those big kashrut organizations have a list exactly of which manufacturer to, to get. But let's say you had something which is fine. You should know, by the way, anything that is open should not be used. Anything, let's say you had a five pound sugar thing that you bought at uh, Costco, whatever. It's, ha it's, it's half, uh, you know, you open it and you use half of it. Well, you can use it on Pesach. You get a, everything that is open, we take, we put to the side. We take it, we put it to the side. Yes, sir. Because you can't tell me for sure that there was no chametz, in, uh, you know, it fell inside. How do you know it was for sure? In, in some case where you know it was in a fridge and you were, you were the one who took it all the time and you dealt with it and you 100% sure that this thing didn't come out. I still, you know, you start cutting, the thing is like this, even if it was for me myself and I know I will do the sugar and so on and so forth, I don't start cutting corner for myself. That's it. It's open, I don't use it. And that's why I told you, if you remember, in Adar, when Adar started, I said to you, stop buying so much, start using what you have. Because again, we are so, we are so concerned. I'm not saying take it and throw it away, but take it in a double bag, tie it and put it to the side. Let's say you bought a big thing of mayonnaise like this. I don't know why you will buy it, but let's say you did. I don't say it. take your mayonnaise and throw it out. If you can store it in the refrigerator, take a bag, tie it, then put it aside, so you know that this is stuff that was open. But, you know, let's say you took the, you took the sugar and you just made the, I don't know, you put some sugar in the challah, and you need a little bit more, you just need to drop more, so you pour it like this, you touch your hands, you know, it wasn't in a sterile, chametz sterile environment. It was open, you gotta, you gotta put it to the side. Anything is open, you gotta put it to the side. <clears throat> so, uh, some of the Israeli manufacturers are good because they use only sugar, and the Israeli sugar is a little, I told you this before, it's a little different than American sugar. The Israeli sugar is made out of uh, beets, where American sugar, most of it is out of its cane, uh, sugar, sugar canes, yes. Then how about um, raw sugar, is that okay on Pesach? Raw sugar. What's raw sugar? It's a brand company, it's a brand. It's a brand. It's a brand. It's a brand. There's sugar in the raw. I don't know, the brown one? Yeah. Has to be kosher le pesach. Go to the go to the list of the uh, of the uh, of the of the manufacturers. Look at the OU. Look at all these things. If you have it like this and it's closed, you can use it. If it's okay. If it's open, don't use it. Uh, anything that is like let's say liquid stevia has to be kosher le pesach. Uh, if you use if you're growing in your backyard stevia leaves. Uh, you know the leaves themselves don't need to be kosher because they're just leaves. But if you're using if you're using uh, you know process needs to be kosher for Pesach. Uh, you know sweet and low and stuff like this doesn't need to be kosher for Pesach. Some people 
don't use it because it, they claim it comes from uh, comes from legumes. So they they have a special one for Pesach. Uh, uh, sugar powder needs kashrut for Pesach because in sugar in uh, sugar powder they, uh, they add starches so it won't you know uh, curl up so they put starches inside so that needs to be kosher for Pesach you can assume that it's good salt uh, believe it or not salt needs to also be uh, kosher for Pesach in other words you buy you buy it close buy the whole thing buy it close it's good for for that why why does it need salt? In a way, it does not need a hechsha. However, when they take the salt and they grind the salt in those factories of the plants, sometimes they grind other things in the machines. And that, that, is, that, is, the, uh, that is the problem. Uh, and according to that, there's some people hold that melach is considered to be davar harif. So they are concerned with the yisur chametz that was nivla in the, in the salt. So that's why it's good for you to buy new salt or salt that you know it's kosher le Pesach. Most of the salt that come from Israel, it's not a problem. You can use it like this. Tea also needs to be kosher le Pesach uh, because sometimes, especially if it's tea with flavor, sometimes that flavor tea has starches in it in the flavoring that they add on. So and that would be even like, uh, you know, let's say you buy Earl Grey. Very common. I have Earl Grey tea. You need to make sure that it's Earl Grey that comes with the kashrut for Pesach. Because the Earl Grey is the ed, you know how they, how do they make Earl Grey tea? Anybody knows? They add bergamot to the, bergamot is, is, is a plant. But they take the, 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 the essence from that and they mix it up with starches and then they soak the tea leaves with it. That's how you get, you get, uh, you get Earl Grey. So you need to make sure that it's kosher. The Israeli ones are kosher. Most of the Israeli, uh, Wisotsky, whatever it is that they come up, they have a kashrut le Pesach on them. Other than that, you know, other tea companies, I don't use for Pesach. I use the Israeli flavor, the Israeli ones. Yes. Himalayan salt grinder. Can I use it if it's sealed? But I used it during the... Uh, you need to kosher it because it's a clay souda. You would need to kosher it because you put it on the table. The toy will chametz. If you can't kosher it, you can use it. So use a different one. Uh, that's, uh, okay. Uh, we spoke about coffee. We spoke about, uh, oh, it's 9 o'clock. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, let's stop this.